Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to NCRF TV Network's Elevate Your Game series. We are here to help you guys gain you some more knowledge, expand your network with industry experts. We're going to touch on some opportunities, give out some resources and some information and tools, but it is all just to help grow you. So we have a quick reminder that we will be monitoring the comments on all of our social media platforms. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to add them. We will be watching. Um, and so today's topic is building the new Black Wall Street. And our special guest today is Kendrick Tillman, or some of you may know him as DJ Five Star, and he is the founder of Five Star Enterprise. And to start us off today, here is our internship and careers manager, Mrs. Denise Parker. Welcome everybody. Hi, this is Mrs. Denise Parker. I am the manager of internships and careers for the National College Resources Foundation, also known as NCRF, and welcome you to our NCRF TV program series called Elevate Your Game, where we try to motivate you, try to encourage you, try to make sure that you have all the, sk the skills, the tips, the tools from industry experts, the inside track to how to build your businesses and also elevate your careers. We're here for you and this is all love. But before we introduce our special guest, the founder of Five Star Enterprises, uh, DJ Five Star, also Kendrick Tillman, he's known as, we're going to go back to some special announcements. Go ahead, Faith. Take it away. All right. To start off our announcements, we want you guys to join some of our uh, join our incubators they are a group of students and educators and so they are who we started this all for um, we wanted you guys to be able to access the information and the network and with that you know we also wanted you guys to be able to access each other um, so you can scan the QR code and join, be an incubator, get access to our network and our experts, as well as any opportunities they have, scholarships, internships, entry-level jobs, all of that they are glad to share with us and we are more than glad to share with you guys. So you can go ahead and scan that QR code to sign up and get that information. All right, and next we have our LAX Integrated Express Solutions Construction Internship. LAX Integrated Express Solutions is also known as Lynx. They are working on the Automotive People Mover Project over at LAX, which will make commuting around LAX a lot easier. And if you know LAX, you know why that is so historic and important. And so this is open for our college juniors and seniors interested in construction, um, so construction engineering, civil engineering, industrial, structural, or uh, any type of construction management. Um, and you can get paid for this opportunity as well. So you can go ahead, scan that QR code to submit your resume, and we will be glad to send you over. Next, we have our Pride and Joy, our Expo, our Latino College Expo. It is taking place at Cal Poly Pomona, September 10th from 10 a.m. to 10 to 3 p.m. Sorry about that. It is free, and if you need help applying for uh, school or scholarships or financial aid, all of that help will be there. A couple of colleges will be giving on-site acceptances. So go ahead and if you could show up, show out and see what's up there for you.
Right. Okay, Faith, we just having we're having a little technical difficulty, so you're just gonna have to just bear with us. We've had some different things that have been kicking us out and it happens to be part of the system. Just be patient. Go ahead, Faith. Let's get back to it. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and so next we have another pride and joy of ours is our medical terminology course. This course is free and at the end of it, you do get certificates for it. So if you are 18 years and older and are interested in some type of medical field, you're going to have to take the course anyway. So you might as well get ahead. Go ahead and you can send, scan that QR code and sign up and just learn how to speak as someone in the medical field, basically. Um, because as we know, anyone who's been to the doctor, they use a bunch of big $5 words. So wouldn't it be nice to know how to break that word down to explain it to your pupils? Um, so go ahead, scan that QR code and get signed up. Okay, and next we have Masterclass. If you don't know what Masterclass is, it is an online platform where you can take a couple of classes on a specific topic um, and it will be taught by experts. They have the presidents, they do a White House uh, series. So all of the presidents, they have cooking with Gordon Ramsay, they have business with um, all different types of CEOs, they have writers, they have animators, anything you're looking for, they have it. So if you are interested in a membership for this, you must be 18 years or older to sign up, but you can go ahead and email me at faith at ncrfoundation.org and let me know and I will be glad to give you guys that information to help you guys sign up. Again, you do have to be 18 years or older to sign up. Um, also, if you want more information on what Masterclass is and how it works, we will be having a workshop on that next week. Um, so if you're interested in that information, you can also email me or sign up for our incubators. Okay. And so for scholarships, we have the Third Good Marshall College Fund. Last time I checked, there were two still open that close on October 1st. So go ahead and apply. That deadline is coming up quickly. Um, even though it's still the beginning of the month, I do know that as a college student, signing up for scholarships can you know, close in on you pretty fast. So go ahead, sign up, scan the QR code, and it'll take you right to the website. Um, Thurgood Marshall College Fund is also just a great place to find more scholarships. So if you are looking for a hub of scholarships, Thurgood Marshall College Fund is a really good place. All right, and we have another special guest who's gonna come speak on Nathaniel H. Pickett and their event coming up this Saturday. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Tenniceros. I'm a business intern for the Nathaniel H. Pickett the Second Foundation, and I'm here to invite everybody to our mental health um, fair and training on Saturday, August 20th. We will have a fair with different vendors that provide different products and services and resources related to mental health and a training that will focus on how to validate, appreciate, and refer someone um, when they come to you with any issues. This will be taking place from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Westminster Pre Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C. Um, please look at our website, nhp 2 foundation.org to as in the number two and you can find the event right on there so you can reserve your spot for the training there will be giveaways um some food and you know some free merch from the 
from the vendors. So please come out. And I hope that to see many of you guys there. Thank you. Karen, can you real quickly put the website in the chat, private chat, and I'll add it to our live streaming audience platforms, which are all our socials. I will and do that, that and I will also share with you the link to our event, right? Is that fine? That's perfect. So yeah. Nathaniel H. Pickett the second is a wonderful social justice um, foundation that started um, on behalf of the late Nathaniel H. Pickett the second, who died at the hands of the sheriff in California, and out of that result started this whole movement within this um, through his mother who's carrying on his legacy. And we support this foundation wholeheartedly because of all the social injustices that are happening across our nation. And mental health is a huge crisis in our communities. And we wanna focus on that and supporting um, mental health initiatives such as what Nathaniel H. Pickett the Foundation, the second foundation has us um, have. So I'm putting it in the chat right now taking it out of the chat and put it in the comments i should say all the information do you want to add anything karen to this i just want to make sure that you all know that this is a free event um so please come out i would love to see all of your lovely faces there and thank you so much for the opportunity denise yes you're welcome Okay, so this is going to lead us to our next thing. Thank you, Karen, and just look for it in the in the comments. Go ahead, Faith. All right, and to end off my portion of tonight, we are going to have our HBCU fun fact. And today's fun fact is about Alabama A and M University, also known as The Hill. Um, and so they are in Huntsville, Alabama. And so they are the third HBCU for STEM majors. The first two are NCAT and FAMU respectively. And so following those two, Alabama a and is one of the top 50 colleges in the US total for graduating African-Americans with bachelor degrees in computer science, engineering, math, and science, um, any type of science. So it is the one of the top 10, as I said, it is the third HBCU for graduating black engineers and mathematicians. So if you find yourself going into computer science, engineering, math, any type of science or any engineering, Alabama a and might be the school for you. So go ahead and check that out. And again, if Alabama a and isn't for you, Florida A&M and North Carolina A&T just might be. So go ahead and check those schools out. And if you have some questions about FAMU, you can go ahead and email me as a junior. I feel like I have some pretty knowledgeable information on that school. So again, this was our HBCU fun fact of the night. Well, Faith, that was it. That's all. That's all we have for our lovely audience. That is all for me. But fortunately, we have someone following me up who is very entertaining and will give you guys a great show to look forward to. Thank you, Faith, for all that you do for our company. And congrats on the new school year. I hope and I know you're going to do well. And I can't wait to see what's going to come out of it. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was a lot. I know we have so much to offer you guys because we are a resources foundation. Key word there. In that being a resources foundation, we also want to talk about subject matters that are matter to us and our culture, not just as black and brown, but all those who identify as such and those who want to learn more about our culture. And that being said, we entitled this segment, the new building the new black wall street. It's part of a series that we've continued on. And part of it is 
now learning how to take an, a business that was old and turning it into something brand new with a new spin on it. No pun intended. We're going to talk to DJ Five Star. I think I should bring him on right now. If it's not too late, where is he at? Where's he? Here he is. Here he is. Hey. I'm here, everyone. Hello. How you doing? How's you doing? How's everything going? I'm living a dream, y'all. I dreamt this 16 years ago, and we're living it. Hey, what do you mean you dreamt it 16 years ago? Tell me about that. We are a STEM manufacturing company, and we launch products that excite students about science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm, mm. So how did you get started? I mean, we've been talking about you turning something old into something new. Like, how did you come up with this vision and this idea? Absolutely. Well, let's let's talk about business first. They said, Kendrick, we need to talk about some business things. So let's talk about business. Business has three pillars. No matter what way you look at it, you have legitimacy, liquidity, and sustainability. Legitimacy is just making sure you're paying your taxes, you legit with the, whatever state you are in doing business with. Liquidity, we'll talk about, that's your capital. And sustainability, we'll talk about as well, is the problem you solve or the need you satisfy. So for us, just give you some history about me, I would always say find your life's work. And so for me, of course, I'm on the East Coast. I love y'all so much. I can't wait to get back over there on the West Coast. But I'm from Maryland. I'm an electrical engineering degree holder. Then I went and got my MBA, and now I'm an entrepreneur and a philanthropist. So for those that are out there, I want you to put in the chat right now, I am not a thief. It might be covered up there, but it says, I am not a thief. And I'm going to explain to you why we are talking about why you shouldn't be a thief. And so I think everyone under the sound of my voice should focus on getting out of their situation or their hustle or whatever they do to get by they go above having just a job that you really don't even like to the career path that if you love what you do great but if you have a career path that you do not love what you do consider this finding your life's work now your life's work has three ingredients they don't we don't have a lot of time so i'm going to make sure that i can go right in it says that the first ingredient is your passion you love what you do so much that you would do it for free your second ingredient is what we talked about earlier with sustainability what matters in the world and what you can control focus is in between it. That's the problem you solve or the need you satisfy. And the third thing is make the world a better place. When you put these three things together, you actually create your life's work. And so with, with, with that, we're talking about how I did it. And so I was going to share that with you as you ask these questions, or I, do I just continue to kind of show how no. I deliver it? Do no, I keep I think you, no, you started off very well. I think that just opening up with talking about following your career path and it will lead you to from your passion to your life's work. And it's all about purpose. And that's what we do here at NCRF. We help our students to actually identify their purpose through some of their passions. Um, you started off with DJing. And how did that come about? Were you always into music and you know, just a music head and just wanted to just, to, you know, you know, bring it live at the parties. What happened? Excellent point. So I started DJing in the 90s, y'all. And so this started in high school when I would basically scratch up my mother and father's records. And so I, back then they had eight tracks, they had records, they had the radio. And I would turn the knob to the radio and turn the knob to the record, scratch, 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 turn it back down to the radio. And I got addicted to the craft of DJing to now where when I scratch this record, that's actually kinetic energy. That's friction. That's physics. Wait a minute. I can connect my engineering degree with what I love so much that I would do for free, the DJ craft. And so that's what I had to really come to the realization. It was a couple aha moments throughout the career because at first 
I love the industry. So I love the energy to play the right record at the right time and 3,000 people go crazy or 3,000 people are singing this one part of this one particular song. And so there is, there is a certain energy that is attractive. But at the end of the day, how can we use this platform that we love to educate? And that's where the transition just was really full throttle for us. And then as, as the pandemic hit, it was easy for us to, to pivot, to say, hey, wait a minute, we can control what you see here. This is something I can, can say, I could say, hey, what, do you, can you see this video here? This video is being controlled by this record. I can control what you see with this record right here. And so here is a quick so yeah, so let's Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about how, First of all, okay, so you're 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 in the DJ booth right now, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and then you are spinning a record on your computer, or actually using a handheld record, and you're just doing it. How are you doing it? So that's actually both. And so this is all engineering. This is a real record, right? There's time code in this record, which is digital mm -hmm. logic. This is my engineering degree right here in our hands. It's a real record, but instead of the record only being able to play one song. It is al it's allowed to actually have that time code, which is the com computer language, is why the computer interacts with that record. And now I can actually use this digital needle here. See? <laughs> digital needle here. And I can actually control any MP3. Any MP3. And so what we want to see is how do we leverage what's already there, the technology that you already are used to, to something that's educational based. And that's where our pivot kind of went and surprised me. And now we're living this dream. Excellent. Okay, so you're, you're playing music at the parties or wherever you're doing it, where you've been requested at, but all of a sudden you have an aha moment, like you said, and you said all the different things that you studied up to this point were relating to a specific career path that, that wasn't music. Engineering, you said. Was that correct or what was it? What was your and major? So it, was, it was simultaneously going on. I was always strong in math. And so I went to Morgan State University, got the engineering degree, was DJing full time, making a living. And the family was like, what are you doing? You should be an engineer. And there was a person that was a mentor at the time. He said, is anyone in your family a millionaire? How can somebody making seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year tell you how to be a millionaire? Follow your passion. And so I, I kept thinking about that passion piece. And at the end of the day, DJing or entertainment, athletics, mm -hmm. fashion are all fickle industries. Something can happen outside of your control. So not only was it an aha moment when the club owner that I had the primary revenue coming to our company sold the venue for two point six million dollars. So now I wasn't getting this two, three thousand dollars a week just for a couple of hours of my time. And so you had to learn that it was time to pivot. And that's where I went back to school because knowledge isn't power, y'all. Don't think that knowledge can be just given to you and you're going to use it on absolutely nothing and you're going to gain some power out of that, right? It's applied knowledge, it's power. And so at that moment, when you say, okay, I want to go back to school for this, which for me was a master in business administration, that tied everything on the creative side from an engineer and a DJ perspective to now solving that problem or satisfying a need so we can sustain for now 12 years. Wow. So you guys been in business for 12 years, mixing music into education, STEM, STEM education, or actually That's STEAM correct. because arts is music. So I've been corrected. I'm correcting myself. <laughs> I just want to just know more deeper of like, how did it come about? Like, where did you like first, you know, connect those two dots together? And then it leads into an actual business as opposed to, okay, let's just do something. How did you come up with the platform? Now, the reason why I had you all type in the chat, I am not a thief, because if you don't put together your passion, mix, mixed with sustainability, mixed with making the world a better place, i.e. finding your life's work, you're robbing the world of your purpose. So when I say, mm -hmm. I don't want you to be a thief, it's because I really want you to put together the passion, 
your sustainability model of what problem you're going to solve or what need you're going to satisfy to make the world a better place. There are professors at universities that do research for 40 years straight because they found their life's work. And so the question is, how did this aha moment come to me? It was in school. Working on my engineering degree, senior project year, I said, well, can I make this more relevant to my life? And they said, yeah, you could design a studio. And here I am living in my own studio, in my own house. And so what we saw was you could create engineering and bring the acoustic engineering of why these sine waves bounce across the room and, and why you need to pad this area more, pad this area. All that is engineering. And so the, the applied knowledge piece is really about taking what you love and then mixing it with what matters in the world or what you can control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then how did you actually go into actually applying that knowledge into applying it to your DJing actually career? Like you said, you're taking your DJ career. Just give me an example so people can ask questions because I it's very interesting because I remember seeing this at our DC Maryland Expo, our DMV Expo last year, uh, earlier this year. And I thought it was phenomenal. It you know, your presentation where you were mixing and then the person was speaking on the screen and doing mathematics or some, some educational, um, plat, you know, you know, teaching. And I just was blown away. It's very unique. I've never seen anything like that. And you're using this in schools and you're using this to educate people of color who maybe identify more with music as opposed to just sitting and just watching a teacher or professor just relay the information. Can you show us an example so we can dive in a little deeper? Sure. And so I'll, I'll bring you past after getting that master's degree. And so this company is Five Star Enterprise, and we'll talk about the products in a second. But just to go back, I'm a husband my beautiful wife there i'm a father of two and actually a grandfather of two my grandkids just left here from the studio and so i was excited to just tell them i'm going to mention you on this presentation because they're, they're the joys of my heart and so what what i want to talk about is this dream i had in high school i played basketball and to win the game for my high school i slam dunked this the, the ball and the crowd went crazy and i remember everyone picking me up in the air and then this dream appeared to say that what if this same energy allowed us to showcase this type of energy in STEM, or as you say, STEAM, as we look, like to use the term stream to, to include the reading as well, because we saw literacy being so low when it's financial literacy or just understanding how to read. And we still want to add just literacy, the, the whole reading aspect to stream integration. And so what we found was when we blend in what we love with what we thought we didn't like, now you may not like it. So we had a study going with Stanford University. They asked 700 students one word to describe math, and 70% of those young people said it was something negative one word to describe math and then so after our product math through music which we'll get to in one moment we show we'll show you how djing actually use math have you ever heard a dj try to transition from one record to the next and it didn't quite mm -hmm. come together that is mm -hmm. beats per minute that's an algebraic mm -hmm. equation that wasn't solved properly this side has to equal this side for you to transition in here two songs at the same time but right on key right on time and then in, in that in in that mathematical moment and so where we are now is a stem manufacturing company so we actually have products like this bathroom music here we have the sound clash kit which students would basically build their own bluetooth speaker you learn the physics of sound and you build your own bluetooth speaker and so not only do we have programming we have products because we wanted to actually start to scale the goal of entrepreneurship ladies and gentlemen is not to create a job for yourself the goal of entrepreneurship is to scale so that you can create jobs for others and so what what i really want you to understand is that products are the way to go because when you look at the equation 
of entrepreneurship, it is M plus M plus M equals M. That is your message plus your movement plus your methodology equals money. And so this is why we went into a product direction to have a STEM manufacturing company. So of course, this is our most least, in least inexpensive product called the Sound Clash Kit with our partnership with Matthew Music. We're excited about this. Our second kit is the JD Coding Kit where students would solder a DJ rig together and program it, code it to play music. And I claim to be the number one STEM DJ in the country. And so we want to make sure that the engineering side of my love is shining through. And so this last product is called Math Through Music. Inside that duffel bag in the corner, you would get your hardware, a laptop with all your software on it, videos to teach you exactly what the curriculum booklet has, as well as two sets of headphones and unlimited downloads on music. And this is where we're in, 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 in one in, in one school district right now, we're board approved for $1 million. And they said in the schools that we have our product in, we lowered violence, increased attendance, and 50% of their students' math scores went up. This is why I'm living a dream. And so what we're really focusing on is how it, it, the definition of insanity. The definition mm -hmm. of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, I like that. You can't do this thing, the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. I mean, I'm having this conversation daily with people who I love and care for. And it's hard. It's a hard conversation because you want to hold on to something that's really valuable in your mind's eye. And you think that it's all yours. But once you start to open up yourself to the possibilities, there can be a shift and change that can be endless. And it sounds to me that you figured out a magic formula to have an endless opportunity, especially with your products being able to be reused or distributed out to the public so that they can basically multiply yourself. You can't be everywhere. DJ Five Star and your team can't be right. everywhere, but they do love your platform. They do like to utilize it. Why is it so important that music and math um, match? Like, how is it? changing the game for education for those young people who are coming into your course work excellent question denise and it was just ready i was just tapping on to it because we we found here in the state of maryland that there are parts of our state that have lowered the grade system to passing of passing to 60. Well, when I was in grade school, 70 was passive. You got lower than 70, that was a failing grade. And then they made 50 failing and 60 passing. And I said, well, well, I don't know if we should lower our expectation. Maybe we should change our approach to delivering STEM education and math school. And for us, we never wanted to be in competition with educators. We focused on being a complement to educators. And so that's where our, our sweet sauce end up being. We, we claim to be the applesauce of STEM education. When you have young people that are sick and you give them some medicine and sometimes you put the medicine in the applesauce so it tastes good, that, that's mm -hmm. what we focus on. We're in that extended learning space, even though we have contracts where we're after school or during school, in school as an educational resource or just in the morning for a, a intro to a teacher's unit plan or an exhibit for ex ex exhibit fair like we do with you all many times. And so we, we have been in every situation in the last 12 years. And for those entrepreneurs out there, you got to connect that passion to what problem you're going to solve so you can always pivot leveraging the technology that's there in front of you. You can't get around technology. Technology is going to double every year, every 12 yeah. months or less. It's going to double, not increase, double. And you, in that mind, you got to leverage technology for the scalability of whatever problem you say you want to your business to solve. Well, that leads to why we have a topic called building the new black Wall Street. Technology is the key component to building this Wall Street that we, once was a bunch of goods and services being exchanged in one community or several different communities across this nation that represented black people and their families and where they lived, where they thrived. And now where people of color are dispersed 
everywhere living in you know places where you know doesn't look like them or it's not familiar and they're still needing to find a connection to recycle money and recycle dollars and how can we do that i like to hear about businesses like yours because our educators are losing a grip on how to connect to our young people every day because the phone and other technology tools are speaking louder than the teachers can actually you know relate to them so i i want to know can the teachers is it practical to use this or is do you have to be a dj do you have to have some kind of djing skill can you be a little can you be a non-hip or do you have to be like you know you know you have to be up there nope. knowing how to work those ones and absolutely two. not denise you can be joe blow that never touched any turntable in your life the videos coincide with the curriculum and so what we what we were doing is trying to create the spark to say that wait a minute applied knowledge is power so yes of course in our programs djs kind of evolve from just attracting to that craft but the point of the matter is, it was to get you excited about finding your life's work because at the end of the day, that's we don't want you to be a thief. I want you, I don't want you to rob the world of your purpose out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can, can people like utilize this platform and apply it to other educational tools, not just in STEM, but you know, somebody wants to teach something else, English or history, or is this platform specifically to just them? Great question, Denise. So I actually showed you four things. The first was the, the JD coding kit. The second was the sound clash kit. The third was the math through music. But the fourth thing is what we call media masters. The way that I was showing you that I could control this video with this record. This record here is controlling this what you, what you see. And so that allows us to be a complement to any and everyone. We feel that we could take your message with our method, and I don't care if you six or 60, when you see me scratch this record and then move the video in sync with the scratch, I got your undivided attention, and I can easily blend it in with any other brand or image that I need to blend it in that allows us to get the message across. And so what we found in the product though, with Math Through Music, because the, com the computer actually have wave files, we actually interviewed a physics teacher. She, she, she was excited how engaged her students were because they saw those wave files on the computer in Math Through Music. And so when she was talking about those wave files in physics class, which was a totally different class than Math Through Music, it related. Right. And that's where the applied knowledge is always power and how we want to leverage meeting our young scholars wherever they are to get them to where they need to be. You know, in college, it was part of my prerequisites to take a chemistry class and chemistry is super wordy and hard and remembering all of different um, elements, I want to say, right. And the formulas and all the different whatever properties to make the chemistry, you know, work. I wasn't a chemist. And our teacher, I remember him, Professor Tom, because it's stuck in my head. He was just this straight, you know, short Caucasian man who wanted to be hip. His class was packed and he always used music to make us remember our formulas and our elements. And it was so much fun. And he, he opened up his office hours and we all passed the class. He even said it. He said, I know based on your major, you guys don't have to take chemistry for your major, but it's required for a prerequisite for your general ed in college. So let's make it fun. I want you guys to succeed. I want you guys to pass. And as long as you listen, you know, try to get up and, you know, groove with me a little bit and then come to my office hours, I'm, I'm guaranteed you're going to pass this class. And it was exciting. I have sat through classes where I literally wanted to fall asleep and it was part of my major. And I was like, <laughs> but the fact that he used something that was relatable to the young people, it made his class overwhelmingly packed and people wanted to, and people were sitting in the stairwell just to even come into his class. So this is exciting. Are you finding that same response when you're 
you know, out there promoting and then p- the kids love it. And they're, they say, you got to go to this class. You got to take this uh, program after school. Like, how are your students responding to this? Awesome. I mean, it is outstanding and right where you just named it. And and the, the school district that we're in right now actually did an amazing thing. They created a reward system. And so that's kind of how we lowered violence, because not only were we there in the school day during during the school day, but they had like a period. If your behavior was great at the end of the day that you could come back to our class or go read a book or finish do your homework. And I think that is what really helped lowered the violence when we talked to the security guard he said my job is much easier mr tillman your your product they're so engaged with matthew music they're not hitting each other as much and so that was exciting to see him excited to see about what we're excited to see and it just made us create this family unit of this this university or school that we're in, in high school and, and it's an alternative school at that. So we saw that there was some challenges when it came to the altercations and violence and things of that nature. And so to see that kind of dwindle because of a product that was a dream come true is just really exciting for us. And it's, it's, not, it's interesting how you're mentioning the, the issues in a school, the hitting, the fighting, the social you know behavior that's happening in the school and how you're coming in and just relating to the students and it's stopping the violence, it's stopping the issues. These are not everyday issues, excuse me, in every school. It's in certain school uh, districts, it's more so like where it's predominantly happening. And the fact that, you know, this can actually help, you know, resolve some issues can keep us, our minds on tack, on, you know, on track to where we need to go. The most important thing is I find that our students, they just need to be heard and they need to be related to. And platforms like what you're speaking on is the new STEM education to help people to take advantage of this and take a part of this even more so. How are your teachers, you know, you know, using this information more? Are they advocating for more, um, more, you know, more more of these platforms like this are they making this a demand now in your districts in maryland well we're in an election season right now and the if 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 our if the new one of the new governors that i've talked to he loves our program if he comes in and wins his governor's seat then i think we'll be all through the state we one one is about data at the end of the day you gotta this is this this is a show me world we live in you can't just say, I think this is going to work. The, the hypothesis days that we had, that's why we're living this dream. Our hypothesis was if we increase your creative thinking, i.e. putting DJ and STEM together, we will increase academic performance and attendance rates and graduation rates. But all of our data was with our partnership in Canada. So we have an international partnership that has data for the last 10 years, but that doesn't always impact the, the state that you're in and so our goal was to make sure that we calculate got some data which is what we focused on in the last year and we were able to get those results of lowering violence increasing math scores of 50 percent of the students and increasing the attendance it was cool to come to school when you got some turntables to actually work on and then you have the opportunity for that workforce training that you get great enough one of my dj instructors will actually employ you and so that we saw how that opportunity turned into the career career and technology education and that's where we start we started to pivot now and to to your other point yes we we have videos that teach everything from the beginning to the end and it's unlimited downloads on music so you you can stretch this curriculum out for years and so no you don't need any experience or you can have my team come and train your team or you can have my team come in and actually administer the program to the scholars we've had all three of those categories in four five and six are the same thing except these clients said they had a grant that they couldn't own anything. So they basically leased our Matthew music kits. And that was interesting as well. Well, you get, you definitely need to know the rules and the process and what you get, got to go about bringing something into your school district or into your classroom. You just don't want to just bring anything in. You definitely want approvals. 
Um, I find it very interesting that you have an apprenticeship program, so to speak, like you're actually helping our, your students to learn how to DJ, learn the methodologies of what you're doing. That way, if you know, each one teach one, you know, they can have a career, they can expand upon it, they can actually build and have something successful upon graduation, or maybe teach fellow peers. It's like peer to peer kind of, um, it, we have programs where peers that are not too much older than our high school students who just graduated from high school or currently are in college. Um, they are relating to coming into the classroom and relating to um, students. It's called our Movement Enrichment Program. It's, part, it's on our website. And I swear it's more social, emotional support and cultural enrichment support when there's peers doing the work. That's great. How can let's add, let's have our, our audience just ask some questions. I think they're interested in learning more. I'm going to bring some people on if you don't mind. And let's Not see what let's see what they have to ask. I'm going to start off. I'm going to go from left to right. I'm going to add you Christian, Christian. I'm going to add you to the stream, Xavier and SD. I think that's short for something, of course. But I'm going to add Christian first and see if we can if he wants to ask a question. Hi, Christian. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. That's okay. Did you have a question for DJ Five Star? Uh, no, I didn't have one. But like, a lot of the information was really interesting. Are you a, a music head? Are you into DJing? Are you want to, you know, learn more about this platform? Yeah, DJ, like, DJing really sounds interesting to me because there's, like, you know, it's, like, with the whole, like, screeching the little record and stuff, it's it's pretty, it looks pretty fun. It is fun. So tell them a little bit about, like, how, if somebody's interested in this platform, like, how they can actually start to learn. Because, Christian, are you in high school or are you in college? High school. Recall. Okay, you're in high school. Okay, what grade, what level? Sophomore. Sophomore. Come on now. So could you see yourself utilizing this to kind of teach your friends, like start a study group? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it, it would help them too. Yeah? See, look at Chris. He could be, he could be down with the enterprise, down with the five-star yeah. enterprise. <laughs> it, it, it's like an instrument, Christian, because, I mean, th just this note here of this... <laughs> can be turned into and that turns into the highlight of my DJ career performing with Soulful Symphony if you could imagine me in my little tuxedo and bow tie scratching with 77 other instruments it doesn't get any better than that wow okay thank you Christian I'm going to take you off do you have any other further questions or comments uh no okay thank you Christian for joining us all right, so on to Xavier or Xavier. It might be pronounced Xavier. Yeah, Is Xavier. Xavier it, repeat it. Xavier, yeah. Xavier. Okay, so do you have a comment or question, or are you just you, this is just interesting to you? You know, questions for the most part. I was just listening, and um, I love listening to music, especially like rap music. So the DJing is very interesting. Maybe not something I'll pursue and doing, but yeah, I like the presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you, are you in currently in, enrolled in college, high school? What, what level of school are you in? I'm going to be a junior in high school. Okay. Come on, high school students rep. Upper class, right. I see you. What'd you say, DJ Five Star? I said he got an upperclassman up here. I see you. Yes. And would you think this will be helpful for I asked Christian the same question for your uh, your friends at school when they're learning something boring <laughs> and you mix it with some music? Yeah, I was much more interested in this than I would normally be in school. Exactly. What is your favorite subject in school? History and math. Mostly history. Oh, good. Good. Can you give him an example, DJ Five Star, what the mathematics, um, like, you know, 
music and math kind of works? Uh, absolutely. We we talked about it a little bit before. It's really an algebraic equation because when you are being the maestro, right? You're the maestro. You're conducting the the the, the music that people are going to hear for that hour, two hours, four hours, five hours, and you got to make sure that your transitions are smooth. And so you want to be able to calculate the beats per minute. So, for example. I don't want to get us blocked, so I'm, I'm trying to play something that's not going to. Yeah, all of my music is probably registered on this computer. Oh, wait a minute. This should be something that's not registered. So let's say. This record right here has a certain beat count. It's one, two, three, four. And so if you were to calculate the beats per minute, right same way you to calculate the beats for 10 seconds beats per minute 60 seconds you would count 180 beats per minute but if you did just calculated the beats for 10 seconds then you got to do some math there because you got to multiply 10 seconds times six to get 60 seconds and how many beats you got in 10 seconds how many times six to get the beats per minute and so we basically expound on all of the math that you would do. And so this is a range here. The, the, the turntable allows you to speed records up and slow them down. So you talk about range. You talk about part the whole, percentages, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, a little bit of algebra, and proportions. And so all of that math involved, is involved in DJing in some shape, form, or fashion. So we dissected the fifth grade through ninth grade math and exposed it in the DJ industry with unlimited downloads on music and basically a whole curriculum full of fun educational activities. So the screen in the back that we can see from our live stream, as you were playing music, it started to move. Are, do you have to have a visual aid while you're doing your DJing or is it just is you doing the DJing and you can talk or how do you normally, uh, how, do, how does it normally get presented? Great question. So again, we were showing you four different things. So the first things were the products. The product are standalone products, the coding kit, the sound clash kit, and Matthew Music. And then the service that we provide, we do virtual platforms like this for intros to teachers unit plans even we even stream into for exhibits for steam fairs or stream fairs stem fairs we do after school programming and some programming and this is how we deliver content so media masters think of us as mjs as opposed to djs a media jockey as opposed to a disc jockey so yes i can control what you hear and what you see at the same time. I can assign videos or I can just make it so it's just only an MP3. So for example, this would just be an MP3 song and you'll just see nothing but a black screen. But you can hear the music. MP3s are audio files. Mm -hmm. And then an MP4, because we just talked about how technology doubles every year, an MP4 would be a video file. So it would have <laughs> a video attracted to that file. So audio, no video, video and audio. And so, yes, we partner with educators and, and conferences, speaker bureaus. They call us the people that provide the audio score or visual score for their conferences. When you say think about it, and I drop Jeopardy, it adds production value to your event. Right. If you say some type of drop the mic moment and I play Kevin Hart, all right, all right, all right, it adds production value to that moment. And that's where we try to be that complement to who, whatever client that comes our way. Wow. So it doesn't limit yourself. So that's what I'm hearing is that you started off with music, 
then you added the educational component and then all of a sudden the world had just expanded because you with the mp4 the video file you can add more content that's relatable to whoever your subject is whoever your audience is so that that is super super cool xavier do you, um do you have any other questions or comments or i want to make sure that you know yeah i actually do have one um i just want to know you said like using the math in the beats uh what did the computer like do most of the math for you or like for like when like the beat would repeat itself something like that good great question sometimes the computer is wrong and if, if you look at the computer and just assume that okay that's 60 beats per minute and you try to mix it with something that is actually 60 beats per minute it's not going to work so you got to know yourself so it's a, a trick back when i started djing in the 90s there was no three-dimensional djing you you could touch the record you could hear the record now you could touch the record hear the record and see the file which makes it three-dimensional and so what we wanted to showcase is the percent change and when, when i speed this record up what percent change did you do and so you need to be able to know that what if the computer screen goes blank you got to know how to be able to calculate the beats per minute so next the next song can can transition the the the, the people who are listening to you they're not going to want to hear oh what well, well, your computer is blank you got to be able to be a professional in your in your delivery of your craft and so that's why it's still important to know both ways to to actually DJ. All right, That's thank amazing. You. Thank you. Xavier, thank you for asking your question and congratulations on starting a new level of school coming up and good luck. All right, so we're gonna move on to SD. SD, I'm gonna bring you on so you can ask the question. Can you hear me SD? Hello. Maybe he stepped away or she stepped away. They stepped away. Can you hear me? Okay. So we're going to go off. I'm going to take you off because we can't hear you. You can ask the question in the chat. Um, so this is really cool. So our subject has been the new Black Wall Street. And the reason why we entitled that again, because one, we are now all over the place. We're figuring out different ways to connect to our communities, to educate, to bring more legacy, um, longevity careers so that our business can continue to grow and expand as opposed to if the town gets destroyed or the people move, the businesses don't die. They continue to grow on and through technology and through the, the, master, the mastering of music, mixed with education you found a whole new platform and career i love it has anybody tried to mimic you or tried and just said oh fail can't do it <laughs> you don't uh, have to name no names. yes a couple of them I, I encourage it because i can't be in a million places at once so it, I, I believe that the most high had 12 disciples so if you think you could do it by yourself you're sadly mistaken I would rather them come to me and let's do it together. But even if they tried to do it on their own, I wouldn't hate on them. I would support them. As many people that have tried, they just quite couldn't do it. And so the strength is strength in numbers and power and unity. And so I would just invite you to join us because I'm, I'm a happy person. I, I'm a Pisces. Well, I, and I well, welcome I remember, you. <laughs> you're funny. I remember meeting you for the first time and the energy at your booth was so live. Your DJs were just so empowering and they were so respectable and they wanted to just invite and they were probably feeling our crowd too. Our crowd was lit. You know, we, the Black College Expo, we always lit. We lit when we walk in, we lit when we walk out. Every city we roll up <laughs> and put an extra tea with some hot sauce on it so yeah so i love the fact that you guys had the whole djing um set up you had 360 camera going on people were doing that where they take a picture and do the 360 camera it was just so much fun happening and um i just i just found that did you get a lot of response um are you getting a lot of response i responded that's why i wanted you on um, did you get a lot of response from just attending our events? Yes, actually, our social media grew. We still got a, many advocates about it. And so we're now reaching 
Prince George's County and different school districts because of that. And so hopefully that turns into other contracts that we can develop. But at the end of the day, it starts with building a relationship. So I always tell mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, forget that word, networking word, throw that out the window, build a relationship. When you build relationships, it builds trust. When you build yeah. trust, you build capacity because I will refer okay. business to you because I trust you. I trust that you're going to do what you say you're going to do or that you say that your company does. And so that right. happens to when you when you networking, I, I feel like that's just you running in the room and just giving everybody your business card. They don't even know what you do. Build a relationship. Mm. Intentionally. Mm -hmm. Build that trust. So they understand what you do. They will help you build capacity. People mm -hmm. love to buy. They just hate to be sold to. So build a relationship. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, and it's a trust factor, um, especially when it's relating to something that doesn't seem like they're relatable at first, at first glance, you know, the music, the DJing, and then all of a sudden you're, you're mixing in some educational um, programming inside of it. And it's cool, but are people learning, you know, are they receiving, but you said it, you said that people are, are more responsive to listen. Um, they're less fighting. They want to go to school. They want to pay attention. They're excited about math. Now they saw it in a whole different reflective part of some of our initiatives is making sure that our students can see themselves, see themselves inside their education, inside their history lessons, inside their mathematical lessons and any type of lesson that's being taught to them. So many times I'm sitting in a classroom and watching a teacher dialogue with um, t uh, students and they're just relating to what's in the book or what they learned in their college careers and stuff like that. But they're not relating to the students where they're at. And I find that this platform is easy to relate to people. Um, it's fun. It's exciting. It'll make me get up every day ready to teach and trying to see how far I can push it. Um, and how far I can take it so our students can learn. Is there any final words that you just want to share with our audience about education and living a dream through your passion? Yep. I wanted to just give a conclusion to wrap everything up. So everything I said boils down to five things we talked about. This one is to remind myself to tell you that your network is your net worth. Your net work is your net worth your net work meaning the people you call that will answer the phone for you people that say they like you your network controls your bottom line so i wanted to make sure i said that and i believe it was another one about another reminder oh yes because your network is your net worth one to remind you that you don't have to rely on just yourself Please make sure you build your team, build your team so you can build capacity, build capacity by building trust. And one way you can build trust is by playing golf, young men. If you'd have told me in my 20s and in my teenage years that I'll be playing golf in my 40s, I would have laughed at you. But I got, I'm here to say golf breeds trust. Mm -hmm. Golf yes. breeds trust. And golf is probably one of the biggest places where business is done you play 18 holes with a person you're with them for five hours you get to know someone riding in that cart hitting hitting that ball with a strategic mind to be still able to get along with someone to close a deal or to add capacity or build a relationship and then of course i told you that we don't want you to be a thief so find your life's work that was four we don't if you don't find your life's work, that was your passion mixed with sustainability, mixed with making the world a better place. You are robbing the world of your purpose. And number five was to respect your time. It is okay to be selfish with time. And this is what this slide was to remind me to say. If every day you got $86,400 every day at midnight, but you had to spend every red cent, what would you spend it on? Every day you get $86,400. What would you spend that on? Let me flip that. The most high gives us 86,400 seconds in a day. 
what are you spending your time on? And so I wanted to say it is okay to be selfish with your time. Always keep your energy around people that are pouring in your cup. You can't pour in others if your cup is only halfway full. And so the what reason why I'm so excited, I'm always so energetic, is because I have a wonderful wife that's always pouring a cup inside me. I go, I'm, I serve all of my time as the president of the chamber or the president of this, or vice president. I'm around people that are always pouring into me so that I can pour into others. My cup is always overflowing. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself around people that are always draining you, it's all right to be selfish with your time because you only have 86,400 seconds in a day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kendrick Tillman. I'm a husband, a father, and a grandfather, and I'm excited about what we're doing as a STEM manufacturing company on the East Coast. Wow. Go ahead, DJ Five Star. Mic drop it. Whoop, whoop. Mic drop. I'm super... Oh! <laughs> He gave me a little sound effect, y'all. I need a little something, a little ay ay ay. But <laughs> so I was just so super excited because that is the message that we wanted to portray to our young people. You know, it got a little rough. We had a little technical difficulties when starting off because I'm streaming from my house. And yes, the Wi-Fi can be good, and then some days it just has its moments. Well, that's what it is. But at the same time, the message still goes on. I was a theater major in college. I'm I can get up on stage and just go. I like live performances. I, it's easy for me. I found my passion in helping others to pull their energy up, to find a way to showcase what their talents are without hiding them. So many times I'm talking to students and they're they're intimidated by the conversation of an elder or a person of authority or a leader. They just kind of talk real low or, and I take that moment in my coaching sessions with our students, because I talk to students pretty much every day. And um, whether they're in college or high school, I literally just kind of lift them up and say, it's okay. It's okay. You can mess up with me a little bit, but it is okay. Let's learn how to get your speaking skills up without telling them that I'm teaching them in ways without like saying, oh, you didn't say that right. Or. That's not right. And go, come back to me later when you talk better. No, 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 no. A lot of them are hidden gems, hidden talents that they just just need somebody to listen in to what they have to offer and just kind of develop them a little bit, water them a little bit, make them feel special so they can feel comfortable that, oh, wait a minute, I do have all this stuff around me. I am who I thought I was. But when I'm talking to others, sometimes I get a little intimidated by that person because they've done other things. And I kid you not, most of the students that come my way, and probably you're so too, um, Kendrick, you find that you don't have their skill. I don't have their skill. I'm not an, you know, a singer or animator or, you know, an engineer. You know, that's not even in my wheelhouse. But I'm talking to them as if I know what I'm talking about because I talk about learning people understanding yes, relationships yes. with people and that right there like you said it will break every barrier you don't have to be the most knowledgeable and most skilled and most smart most 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 all you have to do is just be present listening getting to know somebody and interested and then how does that what they're talking about relate to you and you're like oh wow yeah, you know, I, you know, this is so cool, you know, and you're just super excited. And guess what? The conversation just flowing and they want to get your number and say, hey, you know, let me take you to lunch. Let me let me find out more about it. Let me hear more. You know, make, maybe you can make a pitch or maybe you can come in for an interview or it just leads to one thing next to another. So I'm encouraging young people here who are listening, who are going to be listening today and listening tomorrow. Dig deep. Don't be afraid. Your voice matters. All the things that you're doing, your talent, all the skills, where you come from, it all matters. And guess what? It will build your resume up. It will build your LinkedIn profiles up. It will build your skills up. It will build your social skills up, your talking skills, everything you think about, your communication skills. It will build it all up. And then it will lead you to the next. Don't put yourself in a box. 
be like DJ Five Star. He took his one small box and expanded it into something else so that he's not just being called for parties, you know, bot mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, you know, the birthday part of the wedding. He's called for, hey, come into the school and teach this, you know, seminar, or teach this educational thing, whatever it is that they're teaching. Help us to understand how to relate this music to our educational platforms. Now that is a new Black Wall Street. And I am so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Mrs. Denise Parker, and I'm the manager of internships and careers for the National College Resources Foundation. And we were here to elevate your game and elevate you. Thank you. And next week, join us. We're going to be talking about masterclass. If you want to learn from industry experts, we have free memberships up to a year that were awarded to us by masterclass. I applied. They granted it to us. I got so many to give away and I want to give them to my listeners. I want to give it to our incubators. So join our platforms. You can find me. You can go to our website and you can find me right there and fill out our little profile form. Right there, simple, thecollegeexpo.org under programs, college internships and careers. You're simple, simple, simple. And that's it. That's all I got to say. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, I can't even sing that song. Thank you. Thank you, DJ Five Star. Thank you for joining us and sharing all that you are doing. And congratulations on the next year coming into the school year, 22-23. All the things that are exciting for you. Thanks, Denise. We're excited. And thank you, Dr. Price and everyone from the National College Resource Foundation. We spent a, probably six or seven years or almost eight years now, I think. And I'm just excited to be a partner with you all all the way over here on the East Coast. And so I'm see right. y'all soon. We're coast to coast and that's how we do it. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And once again, see us next week. Bye.